Right now we know that there's quite an interest in growing your own food. Something that Cindy and I have done a lot of and we wanted to kind of just share with you some of our ideas and how we do things. And uh, I, I, I've got kind of an idea in my brain and I'm going to see if I can communicate it with you. When you go to the store, you never get your food in one aisle. You always go to several aisles to get your food. When you go to the pantry, you usually get it out of several different boxes or, or jars or shelves. Growing your own food and, and being self-sufficient in your own food, which isn't even really a good word, but, but sourcing your own food is, uh, is the same way. You're never going to depend on one thing. You need to have several different boxes and several different places you can draw from. Many people don't even go to the same store. They'll go to one, go, like, I don't always go to one store. I'll go to Aldi's, I'll go to Walmart, and I'll go to um, the small grocers there in, in our big town that's near us. And I'll go to our little grocery store and Dollar General and Dollar Tree. And so, that, you know, when, you, when you're sourcing your own groceries, your own food without going to the store, you got to have the same ideas in mind. And one of the first things that, uh, a couple of the first places, if you haven't, if you have completely depended on the grocery store for your own food for a long time, there are a few places you need to start. One of the first things you need is a fishing license and a fishing pole. That's a good way to start to source some of your own meat and some of your own protein. It's enjoyable. Right now you can do that and be socially distanced. Um, and it's a good way to begin to provide some of your own food. And then foraging is a good place to start. And this is spring. This is the time to forage. There are dandelion greens and wild onions and wild garlic coming up. We're not far from morels. Mullen uh, is up. Yeah, which is not really a food. Is it more of a medicinal? It's more medicinal, but yeah. you can oh. you can use it to wipe your bottom. <laughs> for toilet paper. Mullen makes excellent wild toilet paper. It's very soft and fuzzy. Sometimes, yeah, it's really, I'll have to show you my mullen that's coming up up here. But uh, then the garden is probably your next thing you need, and this is the time to start working on a garden. Uh, even if it's in pots or plants or in this part of the country, there's lick tubs everywhere that's used to supplement cattle. Those are great to start a garden in. You can start it in, um, leftover plastic containers that you buy food in um you can cut the top off a yeah. milk jug works cut the really top good. off a milk jug a pop bottle look at what you have you do not necessarily have to go out and buy something especially now whenever we're encouraged to stay home look at what you have look at what you're throwing away plastic um pla anything plastic some paper items you can use solo cups you can grow a lettuce plant in a solo cup one coffee, lettuce plant. Coffee cans with coffee cans cans in the with, bottom. Yep. Plastic coffee cans um, or metal coffee cans. Your soup cans. You can grow herbs and things in soup cans. Jars. Look at what you have. So your first thing you need to evaluate is what will you eat. And two, what can you grow that you already eat? What can you grow it in? Where's your medium? You know, can you, do you have space outside? Do you have a flower bed? Do you have a piece of ground that you can till up? Do you have uh, hanging pots? Do you have a patio that you can put it on? A balcony if you're in an apartment? So look around. You're going to have to decide where you can grow, what you can grow. And you can grow things in window sills and on your t kitchen counters. Yeah, and so gardening is, is yeah. probably another, the next step once you've you know, started on fishing and foraging and then gardening. Those are all good ways. Those are good boxes to draw, good stores to get your food from. And you remember, you need several of these going. Um, and, and there's a lot too, like fishing and gardening and foraging, but work on those and do other things. Animals. It, um, animals have always been important to us as part of growing our food. I, I enjoy butchering in some aspects. Some aspects it's a little tough, but, but so that's always been something we have used. It's, it's very good way to source protein and a lot of times that's your most expensive thing to go buy at the store is meat so uh, that's the that's something you need to work on and learning how to butcher and, and learn how to raise animals if you've got a place and even in the backyard in town and chickens are the thing yeah. to raise your own food 
they lay eggs and you can eat the chickens and you can raise meat chickens in a small space and chickens are important and they're pretty easy yeah. chickens are fairly easy as far as livestock goes the next probably easiest and probably one of the most productive in my opinion if you have a space to do one small animal project and beyond chickens get a pig if you can have a pig get a pig they'll eat everything you don't eat they'll eat the grass they'll eat anything you can throw in there don't hold still too long in a pig pen because they'll eat you <laughs> and uh, so pigs are, are good converters of trash around the homestead if you're trying to grow your own food man pigs are the thing and there's another one that I, I think is very very important I think a lot of people a lot of beginners overlook if you've got a couple of acres um, a calf calves are easy they're easier than goats they're easier than sheep um, cattle are easy. Um, you, you need to know a few things, but there are things that can be learned. And a lot of times, if you live in a rural setting, there's people around you that know how to raise cattle. And so, um, and you can go to the auctions, and a lot of times you can pick up a calf that's either a dairy breed steer or a uh, or is a longhorn or is not the the top selling, but will still raise meat for you. A lot of times we pick up one that may be walking a little funny or have a bad leg and it'll still grow as long as we don't have it in a tight feedlot setting and we in our small pastures that they grow great there and they still will produce good beef you kind of need to be able to look and see what you're doing um, you know you need to know enough to know whether to tell whether the animals actually injured its leg and gonna be able to still carry itself or whether when it gets a little heavier it won't be able to carry itself those are kind of things you need to look at if you're buying one with a bad leg you also need to be able to tell if it's something neurological um, because that can get worse and, and be disastrous. But if you can, if you watched enough cattle, watched a few cattle, and you've got somebody that can help you pick something out, that's the way to go. Um, you can raise a lot of high quality, high priced beef in a small pasture. Um, and like I said, cattle are easy. There's not, you know, if you give them their vaccines and warm them and make sure they got feed and minerals, cattle are fairly easy. And if you don't get a crazy heifer, if you don't get a crazy heifer, they're fairly easy to keep in and they're easy to deal with. A lot of people are intimidated by the size of cattle. Just get them used to be eating out of a feed bucket and you don't need to be intimidated. And, and even crazy ones, if they get after you and you whack them a time or two, they'll usually back off. So goats are another option. Yeah. So especially if you get a dairy breed, um, you can get milk. There is quite a bit to caring for a goat, maybe even a little more than a cow, because um, you're gonna have to be careful of what their feed is, so that they don't um, ha you don't have a, a funny taste in your milk. And if you don't feed them enough grain, their milk production is not gonna be up. So. They require a little better fencing. They do require better fencing, so they're harder to keep in than a cow. A lot of people are moving to the miniature breeds of of goats and cattle. And I'm not a fan of that personally, but um, your your miniature cow is going to eat almost as much as a big cow. So if you're thinking, oh, I'll save money because they won't eat as much, that's not necessarily true. Uh, they it, won't eat. They won't eat much less. They don't. T they take a little less space, but not a little, much less space. But if you're going to do two Dexters, yeah. might as well do a Simmental. Right. One Simmental right. or a cross beef cross. And instead of, you know, we butchered a Dexter that I come up with cheaply, made 200 pounds of meat, I've got a Simmental Angus cross in the locker right now, and it's going to make 800 pounds of meat right. for almost the same effort. Right. So it, to me, it's worth going to stuff that is, is um, bred and genetically designed to produce meat yeah. and lots of it. But we are in cattle country, and so a lot of you guys are not going to be in a place where you can do cattle. But you might can find a farmer that you can buy shares of a calf. Um, there, look for CSAs, look for farmers. Look even in your meat um, processing stores. Some big cities have a meat shop. You might be able to buy a, a quarter beef, a half beef, half a pig. And, and the thing with chickens, they're so dual purpose because if you get if you go buy a straight run, which means they have not sexed them, they've just thrown in, 
And usually that's going to be the majority of them are going to be roosters. You might get a hen or two. If you buy a straight run of chicken and you're wanting hens, yeah. don't buy a rare breed. Right, because that will most likely all be roosters. Because they have picked out those pullets and they've sold them better and what's left over is what you're getting and you're more likely to get a better percentage of roosters. Get a normal everyday breed, yep. get a Bardrock or a Buff Orpington or those good heavy multi-purpose breeds, yep. get a straight run of those yep. and you're likely to get several pullets. Yeah, I really like the Buffs, they're usually pretty gentle, the Buff Orpingtons. Um, all the Orpingtons all across the board are usually gentle, they're good layers. They're a heavy bird, and so if you get a few roosters, when they you can raise them up and butcher them young. It's not that hard to butcher one. You just have to get over. The first few times is hard. I can't do the dispatch of any animal. Gary has to do the dispatch for me. I just can't do it. But um, you can, if you're hungry enough, do it. There's lots of ways to support yourself. Another that we missed in the birds is quail. They'll produce the corton we are the cortonix, cortonix, however you want to pronounce it. They lay a little egg. It's a nice personal size egg. They are fast breeding. They're fast to maturity. So you go from you go from egg to chick in, in 15 to 19 days. Then you go from chick to butcher size in 40 days. And then in another 20 days, so at 60 days, they're laying eggs in, at sexual maturity for the females. Yeah. And cortonics are good, and if you've got some animal husbandry experience and you, you think you've got some things figured out, it doesn't take a lot of space, but I don't suggest them for beginners. Okay, because they're too hard to keep alive as chicks? The chicks are, are very fragile. Um, chickens are a lot... If you want something, if, you, if you're going to start with meat for meat, and you're gonna do birds start with cornish crosses those things are they grow fast and they're pretty hardy yeah and you can you can make mistakes with them and yeah. still come out you can restrict feed so that you're not a lot of people get upset because they seem like they're not mobile but you can restrict their feed to where they grow slower and don't grow so fast that they grow faster than their legs i think the hatcheries are suggesting to do that if you get Put full feed in front of them for 12 hours and remove it for 12, 12 hours. hours. And put full feed in front of them for 12 hours and remove it. I've, we've kind of, kind of restrict their feed, but we don't. And we give them plenty of space. And we give them things they can forage, like new grass underneath them and stuff. And that encourages them to get up and move. And we, we do yeah. pretty good that way. We don't have mobility issues that way. Yeah. We feed them twice a day, but we don't feed them, we feed them, um, they're going to have some feed left over when they're done, just because they'll just stand there and eat till they pop. So we ration their feed, we know how much we're going to feed them, and then we have also pasture them so that they're getting grass and free range. So remember, you've got to have several different boxes or stores that you get your feed, your food from, and uh, um, foraging, fishing, hunting, those are good ones. Gardening is important. You, that's a, a, a key to being sourcing your own food. Um, growing animals, that's important. Butchering is important, being able to butcher your own. One thing that we haven't mentioned is a lot of times if you can process your own food, if you can butcher a pig, if you can butcher a, a lamb or a goat or a calf, or chickens um, a lot of times you can find roosters that somebody didn't want and they're giving away or they're selling really cheap and you can process your own chicken and, and not have to raise it and still have that good quality meat um, and you can buy a, an animal that that might not sell top quality um, you can buy a, a, a dairy weather goat dairy goat weather mm -hmm. and it won't sell top quality but you can process it your own and have pretty good quality meat it's not going to dress out as heavy as right. a boar or a meat goat, but you can do that yourself, and those are cheap ways. Another thing, way to source your own food, and this needs to be in your box too, is bartering and trading. Yes. And if you guys know me, I love to swap. Man, I swap for all kinds of stuff. Um, <laughs> in fact, some of my swaps get to be jokes around yes. here. Yes, <laughs> yes. But 
but learn to swap and trade with people that are raising food. And a lot of times, if you know, a person's growing a lot of food, there's things they need that they're not growing that you could swap for, and there's work you can swap for and trade. Lots of big of, of farms, you can go and work for a day, and, and they'll send you home with a box of groceries. Or you can work for an hour, and they'll send you home with a box of groceries. You just, you're just going to have to look for those places. And relationships is relationships, important, important yes. in that. Yeah. Oh, one thing we forgot is check your zones. I'm not sure that a lot of people are going to worry about zoning for a while, but that may become an issue. Check your zones. Um, if you live in a gated community or in a, a housing addition, you need to look at zoning. You need to look at um, are you part of a what is HOA. It? HOA, Homeowners Association. Check that out. If you're part of an o HOA, and um, you want to make a difference, write a letter to your HOA board. Um, I do not encur I do not want to encourage anyone to go against what a document they've signed and agreed to. So if you have agreed to live in an HOA, you need to abide by those or move. A lot of times even in an HOA, you can plant some edibles in a flower bed as long as it's still ornamental. And, and pretty, well kept. Yeah, yeah. And well kept and you can still do that and that's important. Yeah. And, and you know that there's still ways to do that. And if you live in an HOA, a lot of times those are in the suburbs. You're not far to a place where you can go fish or forage right. and stuff like that. And those those are good ways still to provide food for yourself. Watch another thing. If you're big cities, watch for empty lots that can be turned into community gardens. Um, I know we're supposed to social distance, but you can make arrangements and have you know make time slots where this is Susie's time to, to work in the garden and this is Joe's time to work in the garden. Make your friendships, make your neighbors. In this age of technology, you can find people next door to you that you never even knew were in the same apartment complex and over down the street here is an empty lot. Talk to the city, find out. You can make do all that online. You can make phone calls and find out about empty spots that might be able to be used and to grow more food than just for you. So another thing that I'd like to talk about is sharing your food, whether you are, that you've sourced, whether you are sharing it with someone that can't grow it for whatever reason, whether it's a disability, age, whatever, sharing it with them, or it could be a source of income or, or a way to barter. So thanks for watching, guys, and um, I pray you're all blessed and healthy.